Homework 9, compound interest to be a 7, calculating periodic payments. In the previous video, we saw the power of an annuity when we looked at an example of paying $250 a month for 18 years and ending up with $72,000. And you may be wondering, is that how much $250 a month for 18 years is? Well, no. $250 a month for 18 years is only $54,000. So that means the interest, I'm not sure what I just did there. That means that we earned about $18,000 in interest over the course of, over the term of the annuity. But sometimes you need to reverse the process. For example, and then we'll look at a formula. A couple wants to buy a $200,000 house in 10 years. Remember the previous version of this two videos ago? They needed a hundred and some odd thousand dollars now if they just sat at the bank and walked away and came back in 10 years. But now they're thinking about buying an annuity that pays 5% annually. What should the monthly payments be? Now be careful. When I say pay 5% annually, that just means it's the annual interest rate. That doesn't mean that they're getting interest one time per year. Remember, in an annuity, the frequency of the interest matches the frequency of the payments. So if they're going to make monthly payments, then we will be getting um, we'll be getting interest 12 times per year. So how do we do this? Well, if you think about it, and the formula I'm about to show you is not in the book. I wish it were, because what they want you to do is the same algebra problem over and over again. Let's just do it once and make a new formula. We need a formula that says R equals. Remember, R is the periodic payment that we're calculating. So we could substitute all the numbers that we know and then start doing algebra. But well, let's do the algebra first. How can I get this R by itself? Well, without teaching an algebra lesson, the first thing we need to do is multiply both sides by this fraction. So imagine putting this fraction here and putting it over here. It would cancel and that would get the R closer by itself. Then, to get rid of this chunk multiplied by it, we could just divide both sides by it. I'll spare you the details and just show you the results. Basically, you get the periodic payment formula. You just switch a couple of things. Number one, you switch the A and the R. And number two, you switch the top and the bottom of the fraction. Double parentheses, one plus R over N, close parentheses, exponent parentheses, N times T minus one, Close parentheses. It's, it's, it's not just hand waving and it's not just magic. The algebra dictates that that's what you would do, but visually speaking, the formula for periodic payments, you just switch the location of the A and the R, and then you reverse the positions in the fraction. So let's see what happens on this problem. Let's start by identifying everything that we know. Our future value needs to be 200,000, so that's the A. We want this to happen in 10 years, so that's T. Our annual interest rate is 5%, so R equals 0 0.05. And we're making monthly payments, and so our N equals 12. So let's just plug everything into the periodic payment formula. A, which is 200,000, times R over N, so 0 0.05 over 12, don't lose the decimal, all over, double open parentheses, 1 plus, I don't know why sometimes I make my 1 straight line and other times a little fancier. Just to be a conflict between left brain and right brain. But let's get back to the problem. Down here, double open parentheses, 1 plus, R over N, so 0 0.05 over 12, close parentheses, exponent, open parentheses, N times T, so 12 times 10. I know that's equal to 120, but I won't always know the answer to this multiplication problem, so I'll just leave it and save it for the calculator. And then continuing, out of the exponent, minus 1, close parentheses again, and there's the setup. By the way, in your next test, I will ask you to take pictures, take pictures of your setups 
and send them to me. That way, if the setup is correct, but the calculator work goes wrong, I can give you partial credit. So you do want to practice setting up these formulas. As far as the calculated keystrokes, just type what you see. 200,000 times, open parentheses, 0 0.05 divided by 12, close parentheses, divided by, for the giant fraction bar, double open parentheses, it is important to type both, 1 plus 0 0.05 divided by 12, close parentheses, pressure exponent button, open parentheses, 12 times 10, close parentheses, get out of the exponent, for those of you who have calculators with elevated exponents, minus 1, close parentheses, and don't forget to press equals. Alright, I invite you to put this in your calculator. You can pause the video if you'd like to do that. I will be doing it now. 200,000, five zeros, times, open parentheses, 0 0.05 divided by 12, close parentheses, divided by, double open parentheses, 1 plus 0 0.05, divided by 12, close parentheses, exponent, open parentheses, 12 times 10, close parentheses, minus 1, close parentheses again, equals. I'm going to write down the answer I got. I'm going to recalculate it to make sure that it's correct. The answer I got to the nearest cent is $1,287.00. And 98 cents. But I will do it one more time just to make sure I didn't make a mistake. 200,000 times parentheses, 0 0.05 divided by 12, close parentheses, divided by open, open, 1 plus 0 0.05 divided by 12, close, exponent, open, 12 times 10, close, minus 1, close, equals, same answer. Is that a lot of money? A lot of month, month, that, that. Is that a lot of money per month to put aside? Well, if you're going to buy a $200,000 house in 10 years, yes. No, I take that back. No. This is a lot of money. And honestly, most people that buy a $200,000 house usually take at least 30 years to pay for it. But if you can wait, you should pay for it by saving in advance and not pay out the mortgage. Why? Because by saving for it in advance, what you're doing is earning interest on your money. If you take out a loan to pay for it, you're paying interest on $200,000. Just to show you, if you take that $12,000, excuse me, $1,287.98 and figure out how many times you would pay that, 12 times a year for 10 years, so times 12 times 10, altogether, over 10 years, you will have paid $154,557.60 for a $200,000 house. So you ended up saving about $45,000 by saving for it in advance. Now flip that. If you buy this house up front and borrow the $200,000 and pay it out over 30 years, you will probably have paid close to half a million dollars for that house. It's really all a matter of when do you want it? Can you wait 10 years? Can you sacrifice this amount each month? And then let that grow? Remember, 10 years of this was only about $155,000. Or do you want it now and pay out almost half a million over 30 years? It's a matter of what's more important, saving the money or getting into the house now. Of course, you can do a combination of both, but I'm getting a little ahead of myself. So that's the last video for this section. If you know what your future value of an annuity needs to be, this formula will calculate the monthly payment that you need to make right now. All right, get into the uh, homework nine, give it a try, and uh, I'll see you in the next series of videos.